Ooh, and welcome to this holiday live coding session, part of the CodeBuddies.org community. CodeBuddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer-to-peer -peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. Today, we're going to be working on a fun melodic project. We started, I think, a couple weeks ago or a week ago, two weeks ago, I think, maybe to create an interactive musical instrument using only web standards. Hopefully that'll be the end result, although we might add a uh, server uh, element to it to, for example, store um, musical sequences. But at this point, it's all just HTML, JavaScript, and SVG. I might be joined shortly by my brother, Mike, who helped kick off the project last week. But I think the one of the main ideas today um, is just gonna be kind of fun, to, a way to experiment with different geometries. You see we've got a couple geometries here. And ultimately we want to sort of wire up this whole circle of keys so that you can play the fifths, the fourths, the sixths, the seconds, and even the sevenths and uh, transition and modulate more or less between keys and have pretty clearly delineated ways of getting around the musical topology. Okay, so we're gonna get ready to start in just a moment. First, I'll have a little bit of tea. Okay, I have some chai tea brewing here, uh, vanilla chai and turmeric chai. So, so uh, what we've built so far is this circle of keys that when you press the circles, it'll play the corresponding chord. So you can play two, whoops, it's a little bit buggy, sorry about that, two, two, five, one. And you don't have to know a lot of music theory to be able to interact with this. But the music theory is actually sort of intrinsic to the way this um, diagram is created. So let's start off with just a little bit of fun. We'll bring up Inkscape. And I'm not a very good illustrator. But I'll see what I can create here. Uh, let's see if you can guess it as I design it. You might have already noticed the spoiler on the <laughs> on the code tab. So I think if I edit, mm, what's the simple way of doing this? I'm not super skilled. I think it's Bezier curves and straight lines. So we'll do this. I wonder if there's a way to kind of mirror some vertices in Inkscape. I don't want to make it too, so to speak, perfect. <laughs> Should be imperfect, as everything in nature has this perfect imperfection. And drooping a little bit. Yeah, something like that. These can be drooping. out so the troop comes from the middle looks good looks good to me let's make a rectangle 
Hey, what's up, <laughs> Sebastian? Hey, cutie pie. He says, how are you doing? Haven't seen you in a while. Is this a better time for me to live stream so that you can, you can join the party? <laughs> so can you guess? I think you already have guessed what shape I'm making. Hopefully it's not too horrible. <clears throat> Oh, whoa! I see. So actually, if I didn't, if I want to make it, uh, and I'll, I in, in German, this is called a Tannenbaum. Isn't that is that correct? <laughs> well, let's see. What color should I make? This is there's a lot of greens here. Evergreen. What color is your evergreen? Your ideal evergreen. That's pretty good. Now I will make a second shape. But this should be a shade of brown. All right. Looking good already. And how do, let's see, how do layers work? Maybe I don't need layers, but if I want this to be a little bit behind the tree, I need to bring one up. Okay, there are layers. I'm not using them yet, apparently. Object, um, raise to top. So the tree will be a little bit in front. Maybe I'll make this a nice droopy Christmas tree. Let me get back to this editing of the, if I just, some Bezier handles. Is that how you said that? Bezier. Now I'm mixing up, mispronouncing things in both German and French today. I don't want it to look too much like a Dr. Seuss tree. <clears throat> Maybe a little bit more. Breadth. Yeah, we're looking good. Very nice. Getting a little bit of an early start on the holidays. But I'm thinking that this might take long enough to create, might take several weeks to even get this up and running. Now, we've got the nice tree. Now, why would you, why you ask, maybe are you asking this, why would I be working, whoops, in illustration software when this is supposed to be a live coding session? Well, as we mentioned before, we're making these musical motifs, these geometric representations, and this is just SVG. So we need some notes for this. I can open up the where is that? View. Mm, where is that? Edit XML editor. Now look at the source code a little bit for this SVG. Scoot that over there. Go ahead and pan this over so it's on a thing. I can kind of do a split screen. So we're, now we're doing a little bit of live coding. Hmm. Just got to figure it out. I've got too many notes. Well, let's put the star on the top of the tree. Oh, no. What's this button? F1. <laughs> Looks pretty good. Pretty big though, isn't it? All right. I'm going to keep these decorations rather simple.
circular. various sizes and colors. So we'll have a pink one, a light blue one, a yellow one, maybe a light green one, and a purple one. purple something like that then I want to have a little different shade of yellow than the star maybe Oof, that's a little too light nice looks good Brilliant. I wonder if this green one doesn't stand out too well. I don't have many. I have a lot of colors, I should say, but um, shades of green or turquoise. Turquoise and blue are a little close together. And pink and purple would be a little close together. Let's put the yellow there and the blue here. But connected. To the tree. How's it look? Balanced? Ornate? Hmm. Let's put this in the code. Tonics. Uh, I think I should create now an images folder. Tannenbaum. Looks cool. Sebastian, where, where did you go? Are you here anymore? Did you? Was it a drive by, or run by, or walk by, or a stream? Canoeing by on the stream. Let's see if this chai is ready. It usually takes about five minutes. I guess we're. 13 minutes into the stream, should be good. Very cool. Now, hmm, I have to make a note real quick <laughs> of the notes. I didn't do this in advance. So I think this will be in note C. I'm going to start using capital C because I believe here we'll encounter a sharp or a flat. Well, then actually this should be a D. C, note D, F, G, A, uh, this is B flat, oops, and 
I think I need the octave also. Because it does span the octave. So just go to the octave. Just on the piano, it's a little easier. Try it out. I think we can just load it in and the code should more or less work. I'm using um, note and I've got the octave. So we'll swap out this source. Mm. Save it and load it up. Okay. So that worked. And let me just actually hop back over here. Just realized that Inkscape by default, like, I'm gonna change the canvas size, the image size, which would just save the image and not this area around it. But okay. Document properties, let's change the size to. Mm, A6, A7, should be good. I can make it a little 
little bit taller. In any case, this looks good. There we are. All right, so let's open up our browser console. Listen for the events, and I gotta check out the code. Make sure I'm following the, make sure I'm using the correct semantics. All right, so we've got our iframe. I think I, I might be able to do this with an embed. In any case, we've got it working with the iframe, so let's leave well enough alone here. Uh, element is now, ID is called tonnets, which now we're not even doing that. Um, so load attached sound. So we've got this. So it's looking for everything with a class note on mouse open. Ah, so now I don't need the, mm, since I realize we're in the same octave, I don't think we get out of the octave. Let me just go ahead and edit these. I'll take the note data out. Uh, I gotta figure out a better way to do this, allowing you know certain chords. I guess the octave would be a separate argument, yeah, or a separate um, attribute, not argument. Makes sense. Just make things explicit and uh, keep them separated. Good. Saving that. Minimizing. Escape. Oh, okay. That. Yeah. There we go. Refreshing. I don't have a favicon. Well, that's fine. And I also need to double check my sound is working. Sorry, data and notes. Okay, using the wrong. I would delete an attribute. Oh, wrong one. I don't know how to delete an attribute once you've added it. That's kind of strange, isn't it? Anyway. We used plural here because we can play chords with these. We can embed uh, multiple notes. habit of minimizing that. All right. Let's just take a look if these events are firing correctly. Ah, okay. So class note, class equals note, and then data target is notes, okay. It is a little bit, um, I don't know if tedious is the right word, but you have to be very precise uh, when we're embedding this metadata in the SVG. I think um, this allows the designer to come in and change the design and just um, all we have to do is edit the source and add a few attributes. As you saw, I really quickly was able to, to sketch out this um, Christmas tree, really arbitrary design uh, without having to think like geometrically or how to draw those lines or yeah, just directly, direct manipulation. 
and this is also direct manipulation, just adding these note classes. Good to go. All right. So I saved it. Class note. Did I? Note. 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 And note. Yeah. So this basically makes it so the code can find those notes. Everything with the class note, and then it'll be able to play it. Very cool. So it's almost working. Sorry for the harsh noise. Just had to read that error message. Oh, uh, maybe I should make a kill switch here. <sighs> just double check that I don't have. Mm, I don't have the notes property. So. refreshes when it notices. Oh, <laughs> so close. Uh, okay, uh, and this still has the B flat four, so it doesn't need that. getting it. Let me just look at this very closely. Data notes. No. Oh, B flat four. It just needs to be B flat. Alright. And also I'm not sure what notation this uses if it's gonna be a lowercase B. on JS docs or if it wants a sharp maybe the hashtag or the hash mark hash mm. oh come on show me an accidental using a polysynth. Correct. 
using the correct notation. Does the star not trigger an event, maybe? I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't. Did I not get the class on there? That's probably the problem. Yes, there we are. Whew. Slowly. Yes. Oh, almost made it. <laughs> Okay, well, I just wanted to do that quick experiment. Now we can jam. Cool. Well, hmm. One experiment I wanted to try today was actually adding a MIDI library so that not only are you able to play the tones through a local synthesizer, this um, Tone.js is pretty remarkable, um, just, I guess, a library. Uh, let me go back to the main page. They have just all sorts of synthesizers and effects. Uh, I don't know um, the scope of it, and you can even sequence notes. So some general ideas, general directions we were thinking about taking the project would be either using it as a more or less a MIDI controller. So on a local computer, you could trigger MIDI notes, or perhaps if it is a mobile app, you could trigger notes via USB or Bluetooth in a host computer, which would be pretty rad. Uh, other ideas kind of revolve around just getting to know the Tone.js APIs, um, maybe doing effects, having something to stop all the sounds. There's effects, sources, signals. Filters, yeah, it's pretty cool. So it might be a fun to build just to own standalone synthesizer. Let me see if I can just put in a button to stop the stop the noise. And at some point I might be interested in putting in as the JavaScript grows, putting in a library. Um, maybe that's gonna be give me more reactive um, handling of events and, and wiring things up. Right now it's pretty declarative. One thing I can move this.
Seems like a resolve there, doesn't it? So, by the way, if you're wanting to try this on your own, um, I have the code running locally here, but this is also being deployed to GitHub pages. Dot github.io slash tonics. So you can actually just try out the master version of the code. So what I'm doing on the live stream is gonna be slightly ahead. I'm not gonna deploy every commit. Uh, but I'll go ahead and add this link. I think I'll add it to the, the stream real quick so you can just try it out. Let's see here. You can also see it in the URL bar, but I'll just, in case new people come. I'm going to try out the old version. I will put some text. Oh, having trouble reading VLC. Not VLC, but uh, OBS. So do Ubuntu font, let's try maybe 48, 36 point. Make a little bit of room for it. It's not very easy to read, is it? Oh, it's italic. Can't change the outline color. I was thinking if I could do black text on white. It just wants me to do a gradient. I'll have to get a plugin. I think there's a plugin. That's good enough. It's legible. Excellent. Yeah, so this is fully open source. I'm gonna probably rename and relicense the project. Uh, it's growing in scope and the ideas I've got are a little bit bigger than, uh, than just a regular permissive license. I think it's gonna be more copyleft uh, focused. And yeah, we have some applications in mind that could be beneficial for children and elderly people. And uh, it's just good to kind of protect the idea so that it stays copyleft. Okay, so we could 
try different synthesizers. So right now I've tried a tone synth. But a pluck synth might be kind of cool. Just have an idea of the different sounds we can produce here. So I've got a polysynth. Let me just see how this works. And then you send it a voice. So do I have to use a named argument here? Synth constructor must be an instance of tone monophonic. So maybe Plex synth is not a monophonic synth. All right. Okay, that's interesting. It's a little bit harsh. Might be interesting actually to add some controls so that you could parameterize your synth. Which brings me back to the idea of having a reactive um, front end framework but that doesn't require a build system I don't want to add webpack or anything Babel so yes I I know they exist I think even view is an example. You can use that without Webpack or Babel. So let me just see, if I've got a polysynth, what are the methods on here? So yeah, I have this instance and I can just set, I can trigger a set. So 
maybe I'll, I'll just do some kludgy wiring. Event wiring, essentially, let's try to add some kind of UI widget. So we'll leave this documentation open. Let me just double check the synth, uh, the synthesizer I want to use. Put it, for example, filter. So I think this will work. Uh, let's just try this. This is simple. Uh, oscillator. Hmm. This is pretty cool. I can actually create a configuration UI for all the synths, and you can just switch through the synthesizers and tweak their parameters. Yeah, I'm going to need a reactive um, UI framework for this. I don't want a build system. All right. Hmm. It's tricky. The HTML, I'd have to, I'd want to include HTML templates if I would want to factor it out. Hmm. I'll cross the bridge when I come to it. I'll do research, but let's try just uh, doing a tone synth and giving us the ability to change the oscillator. Very nice. So now we have refreshing this. Ah.
Yeah, but just, why is this not rendering? So. Let's just see if. Now it works. Hmm. So I have an iframe in here. I refresh. This drop down stops working. So that works correctly, but the code stops working. Well, yeah, it should work. If I use the embed instead of an iframe, which I, I'm digging, I like that, I should be able to get into this code here. Yeah, it's got all the metadata there. So let me just take a look back at the JavaScript to see what we would need to change here. Mm, when I wrap this tone at SVG. look at this taunt it to that point in time
object embed iframe. So it looks like on the window loads, then they're gonna find SVG elements. So they're gonna select them. They're gonna find those. And for each of those, they are going to get the sub document. So in the get sub document, they pass in the embedding element. So we have the reference here at Donuts. Donuts. So that's the event. So I think we have a reference to the embed. So now we should just be able to say get SVG document. Very cool, and then our drop down works. Awesome. All right, and it might be that we don't have to wait for the um, page to load. Since it's an embed, I'm not sure if that's gonna be asynchronous. Let's leave it for safety though. get a better layout for the for the stream so that you can read this ah oh, man it's just very touchy there we go I want it to stick to the edges
And I'm not sure of a good way to place to put the, um, the video. All right, let's try now toggling this, the waveform for the synthesizer. Essentially, it's going to be the on change event. I will change the synth waveform when the oscillator. Oops, waveform select changes. See if we can get the polysynth inside there, it should be fine. Sorry, the uh, video is overlapping the uh, sort of the browser console. I don't know how to get around that. I can't just hide the video. Hmm. Strange. So let's go ahead and change. Let's 
try this in the browser console. Yes, yeah, better way of doing it. That's one reason I don't want to use the W3 school is just the advertisements are annoying. A little bit spammy. Try not to be too spammy on this stream. I think this was just set, yeah, and then the dictionary with the, um, here that's interesting all right looks good save that refresh <laughs> just play a little bit of music Very cool.
don't know if this is even going to work. switching back between uh, Python and JavaScript. It's a little bit confusing. All right, we're a little bit over one hour in. Like a default to triangle. So let's just, for simplicity, just change the order here. So I don't have to put up a, an event listener for when this thing is rendered. sine wave. Sine wave it is. I think that's a pretty good session. Um, I'd a label and then we'll wrap it up. commit these changes and push them to GitHub. If you'd like to try, take a look at this um, in your own time, maybe change the code a bit, experiment around a tone, DAS. The code again is on GitHub, or if you just want to run it, it's briley.github.io slash tonnets. Here's the, uh, or github.com slash briley slash tonnets. Uh, I think I'm going to start working in a different repository, I might take these other ideas forward. So this might just be a snapshot repository if I leave it running. Um, we haven't really achieved a Tonnets diagram like we originally set out to, but we've gone to, uh, some interesting directions with it, including uh, today's experiment with a Tannenbaum. So uh, again, this has been a CodeBuddies.org live coding session. Appreciate uh, people who have joined the live stream, and if you're watching this on YouTube, do feel free to give uh, any questions, comments, suggestions down below the video. I will uh, take those into account. I will try to respond promptly. 
uh, one more time, Code, Code Buddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer-to-peer -peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. So I appreciate you, uh, think you taking your time to stop by, check out this video, and have a great day.